Where you going, Mr. Marley? Lucre Island. Ah, Lucre Town. The largest urban center in the Tri-Island area. Thanks, Mr. Cheese. Uh, next time you think we can get here with a little less drama? Oh, no. There's not going to be a next time, is there? Better not be. Once was enough. Okay, I'm going into town. You guys stay here and watch the ship. Oh, sure. I see how it is. The captain gets to make all the decisions. Rats. It's still pink. Ahoy there, Mr. Cheese. Yes? Good work getting us into the harbor. Thanks. Next time be helpful if you didn't use the ship's maps as coasters. Where can I find Otis? That useless deck swab beats me. After you left, he ran off. Probably looking for new ways to be lazy. How's the ship? When will she be ready for departure? Just as soon as I repair the rudder, the mast, and the deck. What's wrong with the rudder? Just took a little beating on the way past that breakwater. Nothing I can't fix. So what's wrong with the mast? Well, it got a bit jolted when we careened off the rocky outcropping. Nothing I can't fix. What's wrong with the deck? Well, somebody scratched, help me mommy into it. Deep scratches, but nothing I can't fix. Well, I'll leave it to you. Gee, thanks. Well, uh, okay then. Keep the ship uh, ship shape while I'm gone. Somebody's selling fish over here. There's a duckling on this. Must be the duck standard. I'll let the ducks carry their own flag. Hey, check out that pair of flotation devices. It's Carla. She looks bored. Hey, Carla. What do you want? Where's Otis? He's on shore leave. Why aren't you on shore leave? Someone has to stay and guard the ship while the big cheese repairs all the damage you inflicted on it. Since you're stuck here, would you like me to get you something from town? Like what? Actually, I have no idea. I haven't taken a good look around yet. Well, maybe you should. Carry on, Carla. Do I really have a choice? Lucar Island Port Authority. I better not go in there, or they might get on my case about the damage my navigator did to the docks. It's a chess clock. Hands off! We're using that. He doesn't look like he's concentrating too hard. He appears to be in deep concentration. Hey! Yes? Can I play next? Sure, but you might be waiting for a while. Oh, why? Because chess is a game that requires hours of intense concentration. So who's winning? Uh, it's difficult to say. It appears that Mr. Santiago is employing a variant of the Barbarino offense. If that's the case, then my Kaplan maneuver should choke off his rooks. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Look, a three-headed monkey. Hmm. I'll let you get back to your game. Hmm. So... Yes? Can I play next? Sure, if you don't mind waiting a few hours. Oh, why so long? I'll tell you why. Because Larbot, the pirate here, can't concentrate on the game for more than two minutes at a time. Can I help it if I have a wide variety of interests that cause my mind to wander? Yes, a wide variety of culinary interests, you mean. Well, I never... You never move, you mean? Are you done yet? Oh, no. This will take hours. So, who's winning? It's hard to say. I've been pressing Senor Castaneda's queen with my Montgolfier offensive. But I think the miserable Getz got me stymied with his Estrada barricade. Ah, I see. Your friend seems awfully focused on the game. Notice that, did you? Senor Castaneda is exceptionally well-disciplined. Once he sets his mind to a task, it's nearly impossible to shift his attention. Except... Yes? Well, he does carry something of a torch for Brittany, the bank teller. Interesting. So Castaneda really has a thing for the bank teller, huh? Oh, yes. He carries a picture of Brittany with him wherever he goes. Wow. Look at all those candy bars. Where? Sorry. Uh, must have been a trick of the light. Shh. Don't move. The rapture is going on right behind you. Where? Ha <laughs> Nice move, Brainiac. That doesn't count. You know the rules. You let go of a piece, it's a move. But, but, but. Rules are rules, Tabo. Fine. Brittany, look out! <gasps> Brittany, where? <laughs> Ooh, good move. Don't tell me you're gonna count that! 
You bet your bonny butt I am. You unbelievable jerk! Who was it told me that rules are rules, Tabo? Fine. You wanna see a move? Here's a move! You call that a move? This is a move! You can't do that! Oh yeah? Who's gonna stop me? Sweat Factory? Weasel Warrior? Bug Magnet? Monkey Molester? Cheese Chomper? Soft Rocker? Full Step Standing? Nose Goblin? Lard Bucket? Toily Sniffer? Gainesian Pig? Cheese Chomper? It's the law offices. Um, excuse me, is this? Come in. Come in. Come in. What can we do for you? I was told you guys could help me. Of course we can. What is it, wrongful dismemberment? Hit and run dinghy accident? Hurt your back while pillaging another ship? Uh, no. I need you to see if you can save my house from being destroyed. That doesn't sound very prestigious. Lucrative. Did I mention that my house is the governor's mansion on Melee Island? Governor's mansion, you say? Well, that changes things. Nice use of the TM. But you can't be the governor. I'm here representing the Honorable Elaine Marley Freepwood, governor of the Tri-Island area. She's my wife. Oh, I get it. He's joking about the wife thing. And people think lawyers have no sense of humor. You know, it's illegal to make that wrongful and preposterous claim. Should we sue him? How much money do you think he has? I'm serious. We just got back from our honeymoon. Three glorious months on the high seas. And returned to find the mansion under siege by a dastardly demolitionist. Is this alleged demolitionist wealthy? Hmm, yes, we could sue them. Put a lien on their catapult. File a writ of habeas money if... Wouldn't you rather go after the big bucks? If Elaine wins the election, she'll be a powerful person. And if the mansion is saved, she'll have someone to thank. And if that someone is you... We would be given a lot of money? Er... Uh, not given? Think outside the juror's box, my esteemed colleagues. We could become the official lawyers for the Tri-Island area. Yes, the preferred legal team of the governor's office. What do you need from us, young fellow? Mm, I don't know. You handled Grandpa Marley's estate, right? Right. 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 Did he have a plan for such a crisis? Nope. 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 But we'll get right on it. Right. Right. Okay, I'll wait. Actually, this may take a while. Legal issues can be quite complicated. And take a lot of research. Isn't there something else you could do for a while? See the island. Take in the sight. Um, I guess so. Oh, hey. You might as well take this. What is it? It's a letter from Grandpa Marley. It was supposed to be delivered after his granddaughter got married. This will save us a trip. Now be gone. We have work to do. You can't handle the truth! Where are my creeps? Forget case law. We'll make it up. We'll have to convince the court otherwise. Follow the money. Nobody, no foul. Two, four, six, eight. Who wants to litigate? Who can we double bill this time to? They'll never know what hit them. Is it time for lunch yet? I'll give them personal injury. Hmm, let's see what it says. <clears throat> My dearest Elaine. If you are reading this, then you are married, and I am dead. Now that you've finally settled down with a fearless pirate husband, it's time for you to claim the final pieces of your family's heritage. At the Lucre Island Municipal Bank, you'll find a safe deposit chest under my name. Among other things, the chest contains the deed to the Marley Mansion. Never lose sight of this deed. Furthermore, the chest also contains my wedding gifts to you. I'm sorry that I was unable to deliver them in person, but I go to my grave confident that you've chosen a man I would be proud to call grandson. Lastly, and most importantly, the chest contains the keys to the most terrifying secret in the Caribbean. 
A secret ten times as terrifying as Big Whoop? The secret of the ultimate insult! Yipes! If the unholy power of the ultimate insult ever found its way into the wrong hands, there's no telling what sorts of hexbond mischief could be unleashed upon our fun-loving pirate citizens. Guard these secrets with your life, and know that no matter where you are, your grandfather is watching over you. With all my love, Horatio Tokamata Marley. How sweet. Uh, P.S. If your deadbeat parents come around looking for a handout, tell them to take a long walk off a short gangplank. Let's see. Blah blah blah, Luker Bank. Yada yada, safe deposit chest. Deed to the mansion, good. Wedding gifts, good. Ultimate insult, bad. Yours truly, H.T. Marley. to file for dismissal. Let's ask for an injunction. Habeas, habeas, habeas. We'll just buy all the expert witnesses we need. If we knew where the body was, we could... Law practice for dummies. Who the law of the sea. Bill this time? Dismissal. Hmm, let's see what's inside. Hey, get away from that. Oops. Sorry, I thought there were complimentary mints inside. Make it up. For a bunch of high-priced lawyers, their furniture leaves something to be desired. And if I took it, their clients wouldn't have anything to sit on. No. Have you guys figured out how to save my mansion yet? You mustn't rush the gears of justice, Mr. Threepwood. There are writs of no look and friendly to research. Subpoenas of e pluribus unum to serve. Webs of red tape to spin. It would go faster. Much faster. If we had the original deed to the Marley Mansion. Hey, according to Grandpa Marley's letter, the deed's here on Lucre Island at the local bank. Well, don't just stand there. Make like a lobotomized monkey. Go to the bank and get the deed. I'd like to sue someone. A lawsuit? Did someone say lawsuit? That sounds intriguing. Who do you want to sue? And why? I want to sue the twerp who's hurling boulders at my mansion. First things first, Mr. Creepwood. We have to stop him before we can sue him. I'd like to sue the ghost pirate LeChuck for emotional distress. We can't sue a ghost. That'd be unethical. Immoral. And besides, there's no money in it. Let's sue the electronic gaming industry for driving hardware requirements to ridiculous heights even for simple adventure games. What? I have no idea why I just said that. Why don't sharks eat lawyers? Who says sharks don't eat lawyers? Oh, but sharks eat lawyers all the time. Once they've signed all the appropriate corpus delecti waivers. What do you call a galleon full of lawyers at the bottom of the ocean? A terrible tragedy. A horrible waste. A potential negligence litigation gold mine. A good start. I don't get it. Neither do I. Do the families of these lawyers have proper representation? What's the difference between a lawyer and the ghost pirate LeChuck? Legally, the lawyer would have certain property rights. While LeChuck, being in a state of corpus transparentis, would be... No, no, no. One is an undead demonic plunderer, while the other is just LeChuck. Did you hear the one about the pirate who kidnapped a dozen lawyers? Did the lawyers slap a lean on his ship? Did he get proper representation at his trial? No, no. He threatened to release one every hour until his demands were met. How can you tell when a lawyer is lying? Oh, that's easy. You hook him up to a reliable, though legally inadmissible, lie detector apparatus. Actually, you just check to see if his lips are moving. Did you hear the one about the lawyer who sued to get into paradise? Which one? The Henderson versus St. Peter? Carbuncle versus Heaven? There's a lot of case law in this area. Wow, this is a tough room. Well, I'll let you guys get back to work. Please do. And just why not, young lady? Bank policy, sir. I can't convert these traveler's checks because we've never heard of, uh, what's his name? Australia. But you've honored them countless times before. We've had a bad run of counterfeit money come through here lately, so we've had to tighten our policy. And if you ask me, these don't look real. <laughs> Besides the funny name, there's a picture of a strange animal on here that has another one popping out of its belly? That's a kangaroo, you ignorant pirate trollop. See? There you go. Kangaroo. Another funny name. Funny to say, too. Kanga 
I've got business to attend to, but I'll come back, and when I do, I want these honoured. Have a nice day, Mr. Mandrill. You should Kanga switch to decaf. Kangaroo. 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 <laughs> Ugh, it's full of names and numbers and lots and lots of math. Plundering helpless and unwitting natives of exotic islands is one thing, but stealing money from a bank by forging ledger entries? That's just so boring. She looks a little, uh, lightheaded. Hi there! Welcome to the second bank of lucre. I'm Brittany. How may I help you? What happened to the first bank of lucre? Nothing. It was our public relations department's idea. They felt that being called the first bank didn't project an image of experience. I'd like to make a deposit. Do you have an account here? No. Then what else can I do for you? I need to make a withdrawal. Do you have an account here? No. Then what else can I do for you? I'd like a loan, please. All right, sir. And what would the funds be used for? I'm going to repaint my ship. What's wrong with the way it is now? It's pink. Oh, I see. And do you have a job? I'm a mighty pirate. I see. And what's your salary? Um, nothing. Thanks for your time. Someone will contact you in three to five business years. I'm gonna hire a new crew. Okay, of course I'll need to talk to the existing crew first. Uh, that's okay, never mind. I've always wanted jewel-encrusted bunny slippers. That sounds perfectly reasonable. Really? I mean, yes, of course. Do you have a job? I'm a game designer. Oh, I'm sorry. We don't extend credit to people with no practical skills. I'm married to the governor. I see. And what does that pay? Um, nothing. Thanks for your time. Someone will contact you in three to five business years. I want a life-size chocolate pirate ship, and not the hollow kind. Oh, life-size chocolate pirate ship. With loans for edible items, we tend to charge a higher interest rate. Makes sense to me. When can I have the money? I'm getting kind of hungry. Do you have a job? No free toasters? I'm leaving. Have a nice day. That pudgy guy must be the bank manager. Um, excuse me. Please speak with the teller. But I just have a quick... Please ask the teller. I'm very busy and she can probably assist you. Free scupperware promotion today. Just open an account with 10,000 pieces of eight or more. Nobody can do mental math anymore. Huh, what do you know? One plus one really does equal two. It's full of reminders. February 14th. Give away free Valentine's Day steaks. Whoa, I gotta remember to come here that day. It's full of reminders. January 1st, why 1.6K? Make sure Abacus still works. <laughs> like anything's gonna happen. It's full of reminders. June 6th, break Jay Flabby's legs if he hasn't repaid loan. Yee, note to self, do not default on any bank loans from here. I wonder what would happen if I pull it. Hey, don't touch that. This must be the new thing in low maintenance decorating. You don't even have to water it. That leads upstairs. You're not allowed up there. I've always wondered how they get the ship in there. That's the second most useless trinket I've ever seen. I believe this would qualify as a luscious fern. It's an empty scupperware container. I'm sure this is useful, but how? Pirate Magazine, popular news of the Caribbean's most scandalous and nefarious pirates. And in this month's issue, how to loot and pillage and still be there for the kids. Thinking about that new ship, low 4.0% APR. Subject to approval, other fees may apply. We do not extend credit to pirates. Figures. Bank sure has a lot of windows. Wow, Lucre Town is a sewage system. How nice is that? I'll bet you could get into any bathroom on Lucre Island through here. And it's just too heavy for me to pull open on my own. This bank sure has a lot of windows. I can't reach that window standing down here on the ground. 
Palace O Prostheses. Let's see, rubber knuckles, artificial appendages, faux follicles. Nope, nothing I want here. It's the guy who runs the Palace of Prosthesis. That creepy looking guy has patches over both of his eyes. Yeah, but my hearing is great. Sorry. What a great idea. Pity about the elephants, though. These hooks and hands look like they're falling apart. I know. I ordered those from some fly-by-night overseas company and now I'm stuck with them. I can't even give them away. I haven't seen so many pointy things in one place since my last dental checkup. It's a basket of finely crafted prosthetic limbs. It's a false leg made of porcelain. <laughs> It's a wooden hand. Oh, you heard that. I hope you're planning to pay for that hand. It ain't cheap. Actually, I don't have a dime. Well, then you'd best be putting it back then, eh, tiger? Sorry. It appears to be some sort of high-tech file retrieval system. some sort of document. The name on it says, Zargon D. Evil. It has all sorts of useless information, such as prosthetic prescriptions, address, phone number, allergies. Welcome to the Palace of Prostheses, home of the no detection, no infection, no rejection, 30 day guarantee. You smell new, who are you? It's me, your Uncle Freddy. No, you're not. What do you mean, don't you recognize me? No, Uncle Freddy smells more like lemon bean curd. Okay, you got me. My name is Guybrush Threepwood. Who are you? Well, I'm Dave. Around here they call me Dead Eye Dave. I'm the Tri-Island Area's foremost expert in anatomical approximation. So, how's the prosthetics business? Uh, it's been better. Let me guess. An Australian land developer is using strong-arm tactics to try and buy up your business. What? Where'd you get a weird idea like that? Well, I just figured... Well, you figured wrong. Australia, what kind of a name is that anyway? Never mind. So what is wrong with your business? My monkey left me. And you're so despondent over your loss that you can't focus on your work, right? Despondent? Oh, the Pongo! Oh, don't be silly. Then why was he so important? Because Pongo handled all my paperwork and deliveries. He was the only one who understood my back office's automated filomatic filing system. Without him, I have no idea which orders go with which customers. It's really upsetting my regular clientele. That's terrible. Have you heard from your filing monkey since he disappeared? What's he gonna do? Send me a postcard? Uh, not to be insensitive, but are you blind? Do I look blind? I don't know. The twin eye patches could be some sort of hip new pirate fashion statement. Of course I'm blind, you lilac scented party waste! Sorry. <laughs> don't give it a second thought. My other senses more than compensate for my lack of sight. For example, I usually can identify my customers by their distinctive individual odors. You can recognize people by their smell? Usually no problem. Today though my nose is stuffed up because I got a, a bit of a cold. So I can only recognize amplified odors, like the lilac aftershave you generously applied to your face. Fortunately my hearing's still sharper than a barge full of bunnies. So how sharp is your hearing anyway, Baldy? Sharp enough, Pinky. I'm looking for some gifts for my differently abled pirate friends. Then you've come to the right place. What kinds of prostheses did you have in mind? How about something in a fashionable peg leg? You're in luck. We've just received several baskets of steady leg ivory pegs with rubber stoppers. They're 20 doubloons apiece. That'd be great, if I had any money. What kind of hooks are the cool pirates wearing this season? Oh, a traditionalist. Well, nothing says yo-ho-ho -ho in a bottle of rum quite like our Quick Gut 2000 line of hooks. Today we're having a sale. Buy one hook for 30 doubloons and get a replacement hook for free. 
Uh, that's a little bit out of my range. What have you got in affordable prosthetic hands? Well, if you're not too discriminating, there's a basket of slightly malformed redwood hands over there. We're letting them go at five doubloons a pop. Gee, that does sound good. Almost wish I was carrying some money. What have you got that's free? Free? <laughs> what do you think I'm running, a charity? What can I say? I'm broke. <sighs> okay, you've appealed to my sense of generosity. Here's what I'll do. I'll let you have one of my untested, unguaranteed, unapproved experimental prosthetic devices. Neat. What kind of prosthetic devices are we talking about? I'll let you choose through a story. Huh? Humor me. Once upon a time, there was a pirate named... Harry? Harry. A palm reader had told Harry that he was destined to marry a beautiful singer named... Mindy? Mindy. Sadly, Mindy's finger was already wearing the engagement ring of a bounder named... Jed? That's right, Jed. Well? Well, what? What happened? She decided that she couldn't stomach the thought of being married to either of them, so she joined a convent. The end. What a dreadful story. I know. Here's your free experimental prosthesis. What is it? That's a factory model Biotastic Stomach 9000. If they ever can figure out how to keep the acid from leaking out, they'll sell millions. Don't worry, this unit's empty. I'd like to have another one of those free prostheses. Can't get enough of experimental technology, eh? Okay. Oh, they all died of liver disorders in their early 30s. You wouldn't believe how much grog those kids were drinking. The end. What a dreadful story. You really should leave the storytelling to the professionals. I know. Here's your free experimental prosthesis. What is it? It's a Bumbleweenie M-Class artificial liver. They were recalled a few months back. Uh, I couldn't handle the grog? Just the opposite. If they didn't get a constant supply of hard alcohol, they broke down. Neither of them had the guts to go through with the wedding, so she turned her passion towards the stock market, where she lived happily ever after. The end. What a dreadful story. That story's worse than the last one. I know. Here's your free experimental prosthesis. What is it? That's a few dozen feet of Frinkle and Osterman's artificial guts. Oh, gross. I know. Those things always clog up on cold winter nights. Ugh, oh, double gross. All three of them became the butt of a very naughty limerick. The end. What a dreadful story. You really should leave the storytelling to the professionals. I know. Here's your free experimental prosthesis. What is it? This is a noble experiment that never quite worked. A team of French proctologists decided to attack the problems faced by pirates who lost their butts. Some had had their butts shot off in battle. Others had worked their butts off, while still others could no longer find their butts with both hands and a flashlight. After many years, they created this, the Faux Butt 3000. To everyone's surprise, it flopped. But why? It turns out that people would rather have no butt at all than a phony butt. In the end, she ran off with a traveling prince who slipped a pair of glass slippers on her size 12 feet. The end. What a dreadful story. That story's worse than the last one. I know. Here's your free experimental prosthesis. What is it? These are a pair of Ace Stud Finder supersized prosthetic feet. They were designed for pirates with insecurities about the size of their, you know, feet. Unfortunately, these things just made them look like Dutch clowns. Eventually, she followed her heart and married a quantum physicist from Azusa. Who wants to marry a pirate anyway? The end. What a dreadful story. You really should leave the storytelling to the professionals. I know. Here's your free experimental prosthesis. What is it? That's a top of the line Pump Master Omega brand artificial heart. They were all the rage a couple of years back before the screws started rusting. After many years of plotting, she became head of all the families and had them both whacked. The end. What a dreadful story. That story's worse than the last one. I know. Here's your free experimental prosthesis. What is it? That's a prototype for my own Dead-Eye Deluxe prosthetic head. It's for pirates who've lost so many ears, eyes and noses that they prefer to start all over with a brand new head. How do you plan on duplicating the intricate thought process of the pirate brain? I plan on fixing that in my first patch release. 
See you later. That makes one of us. These feet are huge. Behind every great pirate, there's a great butt. Now I've got the guts to do anything. Ooh. This thing is rusty. This invention is really ahead of its time. This thing looks more like a bilge pump than a heart. Now my creation is complete. I've created a monster. It's alive! Hmm, that was exciting. It's a stinky puddle of swamp water. It's a crude raft. It's locked. Swamps are confusing the bejeebers out of me. It's locked. I feel like I'm going in circles. That watchbird gives me the heebie-jeebies. That fountain gives me the heebie-jeebies. Hey! Who are you? And what are you doing in my house? I'm Guybrush Threepwood, the love machine of Melee Island. Don't make me laugh. You're just another maggoty pirate. Guybrush Threepwood. Monkey Wrangler. You can't fool me, Mr. Threepwood. It's common knowledge that there aren't any monkeys in the Caribbean. I think you're a scungy pirate. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, zillionaire. I own a mansion and a yacht. For a zillionaire, you look a lot like a smelly pirate. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate. A pirate? I hate pirates. My name is Ozzy, Ozzy Mandrill. That name sounds familiar. Aren't you the forgotten member of a famous country western singing clan? Don't play the gink with me, Threepwood. Aren't you the over-the-top heavy metal performer who bites the heads off of monkeys? You're the master of the pan flute, right? Weren't you the one who was supposed to bring balance to the force? Don't play the gink with me, Threepwood. Who's playing? Well then, allow me to illuminate the dingy corners of your mind. Ozzy Mandrill is a businessman. A capitalist, a real estate developer. I'm also the future king of the Caribbean. <laughs> hey, you're the guy who's trying to buy out the scum bar. The scum bar? That's just the tip of the aardvark. I'm gonna buy the whole Caribbean. What's your beef with pirates? Well, for one thing, pirate smell. The only thing that smells worse than a pirate is two pirates. It's enough to make a man park a tiger on the rug. Uh, yeah, right. Is there anything else you hate about pirates? Not much. Oh? Other than the fact that they're an uncouth subculture of illiterate yobbos who make it impossible for a hard-working businessman to earn an honest quid without worrying about being sacked and or pillaged. Not much, really. Ah, what's with all the dead animals? I like having them around. They remind me of where I came from. Burbank? Australia, you ninny. Oh. Why are you buying up all the land in the Caribbean? Because I'm a man with a vision. You too? 
What are yours like? I see a Caribbean freed from the chaotic plundering of grog-swilling pirates. A Caribbean made safe for the orderly consumerism of family-oriented theme restaurants and resorts. A Caribbean scrub clean of filth. A Caribbean you'd be proud to take home to your mother. Gee, mine are mostly about ice cream. Then how do all my pirate friends fit into your capitalist utopia? Ah, oh, they'll be retrained. Retrained? Yes, the service-based economies of tomorrow's Caribbean will need legions of waiters, janitors, maids, and dishwashers. <laughs> but what about pirates who don't want to be waiters, janitors, and dishwashers? What makes you think they'll have a choice? <laughs> and how do the dozens of pirate support industries fit into your scheme? They'll be torn down, of course. No more will these islands be cursed with a blight of run-down watering holes, murky voodoo shops, and disease-ridden houses of ill repute. Instead, our streets will be decorated with classy art houses, whimsical theme restaurants, and upscale knick-knack shops. But what about the stores that won't sell out? Ah, oh, they always sell out, eventually. <laughs> but what about the children? What about them? I don't know. Just thought I'd ask. I'm tired of discussing your warped dreams. And I'm tired of discussing them. My navigator tells me that you're pretty good with an insult. Pretty good? Listen, Kitty Wink, I'll have you know that my insults have finished off over 500 hostile takeovers. There isn't a man alive or dead who can withstand the might of my withering barbs. I bet I can beat you. Oh, really? And what stakes do you propose? If I win, you have to tell me all your secret evil plans. Fine. And if I win, you have to leave my house. Agreed. So, what form of insult game shall we play? Let's stick to the basics, shall we? <laughs> On guard. Touché! Oh, that is so cliché. Every enemy I've met, I've annihilated. With your breath, I'm sure they all suffocated. When I'm through with you, you'll flog the cat. I'm what, 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 what? You're a snag short of a barbie. I have no idea what you just said, yet I feel strangely insulted. Don't come the raw prawn with me. Well, did you redo to you too? <laughs> I lost. Naturally. Now get out of my house. Poor thing. Poor endangered giant wombat. Poor defenseless giant platypus. It's the way out of this carnival of cadavers. Poor dim-witted giant koala. I'd hate to see the creature that laid this. Poor ferocious man-eating giant crocodile. Guns don't kill wild animals. Ozzy kills wild animals. Real pirates don't need guns. I'll bet there's just more creepy stuffed relics behind this door. It's locked. Poor ferocious man-eating giant ostrich. Poor cuddly wuddly giant dingo. Poor doomed hapless giant kangaroo. There's something creepy about that guy. I'd like to take another shot at insult sword fighting. If you must, what would you like to play for? If I win, you have to give me a million pieces of eight, or maybe eight million pieces of one. Fine. If I win, you have to do the chicken dance in the middle of town. Fine. And if I win, you have to leave my house. Agreed. On guard. Touché! Oh, that is so cliché. When I'm done with you, you'll wish you had Baku right. You smell worse than a dunny budgie. Bugger off that ball of my kinker. Ha <laughs> ha! I lost. Naturally. Now get out of my house. All of Ozzy's guests must be very short.
It's a pleasant smelling flower. I'd like to retrieve some items from my safe deposit box. Fine, sir. And whose name is it under? Marley. H.T. Marley. Here's a letter that might help. I see. This is for Governor Marley. Do you have power of attorney to act on her behalf? I'm her dashing husband. <laughs> Not good enough. Oh. Well, there is this. Oh, my. <laughs> That will be fine, sir. Just a moment, Mr. Quidworth. There's a gentleman here to use the vault. Hmm, yes? Hmm? Well, everything seems to be in order, Mr. Marley. That's Mr. Threepwood. As you wish, sir. If you'll just follow me into the vault, we can open up your grandfather-in-law's safe deposit chest. Here it is, sir. The safe deposit chest of H.T. Marley, just as he left it over 20 years ago. Wow, what an amazing collection of junk. Why would Grandpa Marley store garbage like this in a bank? That Governor Marley was an eccentric old salt, wasn't he? <laughs> you know, we were all crushed when he disappeared off the face of the earth like he did. Anyway, well, I've got some loans to turn down. You just let me know when you're done here and I'll come running. Gee, thanks. Well, I guess I better start looking for that deed to the governor's mansion so I can get home to Elaine. Let's see now. Hot Mr. water bottle. Freeport. Monkey what pacifier. Are you doing out here? Uh, I was, uh, Jimmy uh, Hoffa. Do-it-yourself tattoo kit. Robert Bloody stiletto knife. Alex, Bottomless mug. Well, well, you really should have called me first. We have rules about leaving the vault unattended. Gee, I'm sorry. I'll go back. And I'll see if I can scrounge up a grog. Wax the lips. Wax the lips. Ah, there it is. Stick him up! Yikes! Who are you supposed to be? Isn't it obvious? I'm Guybrush Threepwood. No, you're not. Well, what makes you say that? Well, for one thing, Guybrush is much better looking than you are. <laughs> and for another, the real Guybrush doesn't smell like anchovy halitosis. Ooh. All right, mate, bucko. That's enough of that. Back away from the Barney heirlooms and be quick about it. Now, Mr. Threepwood, take a good long look at the last place you'll ever see. <laughs> I knew that deregulated banking would lead to this. Don't be a hero! It's an old cracked sword. It's a packing sponge. That doesn't need to be sliced up. Come out with your hands up! There seems to be something inside. It's a music box. Hey, there's a bottle of fine grog behind this music box. It's a cute little music box. Just send out the hostages and I'll see what I can do for you. Never! I say don't move! No thanks. A grog this old could probably eat through most of my internal organs. This hanky has PP embroidered on it. I highly doubt that this belonged to Grandpa Marley. Phew, this thing reeks. It smells somewhat like hickory smoked fish. It smells sort of like flowers, growing in a cesspool. It smells a little like fish snot. It smells a tiny bit like a corpse floating in a bog. It smells kind of like a lumberjack wiped his armpits with it. It has the faintest whiff of something nice, though. Everybody freeze! This is a robbery! It's one of the hinges that holds this door in place. It's one of the hinges that holds this door in place. Mm, that didn't get me anywhere. Oh 
everybody leaves until I get all the loot. I broke the hand job, but I broke the sword too. There's a little space between the door and the frame. The sword seems to be widening the crack a bit. With the sword jammed in there, the gap is larger. I say don't move! By Guy Brush Freakwood! <laughs> hey! Where'd he go? Hey, what's all the commotion? Get him! Ah! You're under arrest, Mr. Threepwood. Right. Down to the jailhouse with you. All right, you. Didn't your mum ever explain that bank robbery isn't nice? It wasn't me, it was the no-nose bandit. Right. No-nose bandit. Or perhaps it was the guy we caught red-handed. You! Although we haven't found the loot yet. You'll find it with the real robber. So let me go and get cracking. Detective work isn't my job. If you want to clear your name, you've got a few things to do. Okay, what? I need the perpetrator, I need proof he was at the scene of the crime, and I need proof that he committed the crime. You know, it'd be a lot easier if I could just bribe you. I'll ignore that, Threepwood. Around here, we do things by the book. Now, since this is your first offense, You'll be placed under house arrest. I get to go back to the mansion and play with Timmy? No. You are confined to Luca Island. You are not permitted to leave until and unless you are cleared of the crime of bank robbery. To make sure you don't leave, you are required to wear the voodoo anklet of extreme discomfort. I was wondering about that. It's rather uncomfortable. Can you loosen it? Well, that wouldn't be the point then, would it? It gets a lot more uncomfortable if you try to leave the island. <sighs> At least I'm not in jail. Inspector? Yes? I'm innocent. It was the No-Nose Pirate that robbed the bank. Who? Peg Nose Pete. Listen, if I had a monkey for every time some penny anti crook tried to pin their criminal malfeasance on Peg Nose Pete, I'd have enough monkeys to work out a reasonable sequel to Hamlet by now. So what you're saying is that you don't believe me? No. Why don't you believe that Peg Nose Pete robbed the bank? Because, Mr. Treepwood, it's just not Peg Nose's style. If Peg Nose had robbed the bank, he would have snuck in under the cover of darkness, used a clever series of weights and pulleys to open the vault, and would have absconded with the loot without leaving a trace of his presence. Peg Nose Pete would never simply enter a bank in the middle of the day, waving a pistol around like a common thug. It's beneath him. Just for the sake of argument, what would it take to prove my innocence? Well, since you don't have an alibi, you'd have to turn the finger of blame towards the real culprit. Great! Uh, how do I do that? Off the top of my head, I can think of three things that would do the job. A. New evidence would have to surface linking the so-called real perpetrator to the crime. Two. The stolen bank loot would have to be recovered. And Z. The real criminal would have to be caught and brought to justice. That should be a piece of cake for a pirate with a keen analytical mind like myself. I'll keep your cell warm. Can you remove this voodoo anklet? I really need to get back to my wife. Sorry you're stuck on this island until your trial arrives. Or until you manage to prove that you're <laughs> innocent. When can I expect my trial? As soon as the judge returns. Great, when's that? He should be back within a few weeks, when his vacation's over. A few weeks? I need to get back to Melee Island today. Well, I guess you should have thought of that before you went and robbed that bank now, shouldn't you? But I'm innocent. Tell it to the judge. Wow, this voodoo anklet sure is uncomfortable. That's why it's called the voodoo anklet of extreme discomfort. How's the investigation going? What investigation? You were caught red-handed. I'm just waiting for the judge. Oh, you're not going to lift a finger to help me, are you? No. But what about justice? Haven't you heard? Justice is blind. Not to mention lazy, apparently. Quiet, you. Where can I find Pegnose Pete? If I knew that, he'd be locked up right now. Because he framed me for robbing the bank? No, because he's wanted for approximately 300 other crimes on Luca Island. Well, I better get out there and prove my innocence. Stay out of trouble. It's good to see that Luca Island doesn't mollycoddle its criminal element. Hey, I should bring Meat Hook here. You'd like this place. Iron Maiden! Excellent! Uh, I have no idea why I said that. I'm not getting in there. Not after what happened last time. Ew, greasy. I guess they use it on these Iron Maiden spikes to allow smooth impaling. No, I get enough grease eating fish and chips. Now there's a manly pirate. 
It says, Contra Legis Marinus Latrocinium Maris Est. I think that means... Actually, I have no idea what it means. Otis, what are you doing here? I'm a victim of society. Let me guess. You were framed, right? How did you know? Eh, just a hunch. Some old guy with a weird accent accused me of stealing flowers from his front yard. What is it with you and flowers? It's a plot, I tell you. People are to make me seem less fearsome and piratey by accusing me of being the kind of pirate who likes to pick flowers. If it's any comfort, Otis, I never found you all that fearsome to begin with. Ah, uh, go pick a pack of pussies. When are you due to be released? He'll be released just about the same time you prove your... <laughs> innocence. Hey. Just because my captain is a notorious bank robber, there's no reason to take it out on me. Otis! Jace? You're not helping. I'm feeling an incredible feeling of deja vu. Would it help if I gave you a breath mint? Wait, it's past. See you later, Otis. You're gonna get me out of here, right? That's a very aesthetically pleasing fountain. I think. I'm no dog. She looks a little, uh, lightheaded. Why, hello there, Brittany. Oh, hi! Why do you sound like a sick kraken? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Sorry you lost your job. Oh, it's all right. But I didn't like working at that bank much anyway. I've always really wanted to be in show business. What kind of show business? I want to be a singer and have my own backup dancers. I don't have any skills or experience, but I figure with the right attitude. There's no stopping me! <laughs> me too! Maybe we could start an act together. Mm, I don't think so. I'm looking for someone a little more... Piratey? Mm, cool. Then why were you wasting away at the bank? I was making ends meet while I put my act together. Guess I needed the push. I was getting too wrapped up in the whole financial system thing. <laughs> Hope that works out for you. Is it too late to open an account? You're funny, Mr. Threepwood. <laughs> the bank is no concern of mine anymore. I know someone who has a crush on you. Oh! 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 I do. Can you make me a star? Well, uh... Do you know anyone who can? Well, uh... Oh, oh well. If you think of someone, let me know. The bank manager. Ooh! Quit it! That's creepy! Besides, you can't even advance my career anymore now that the bank is closed! <laughs> that Castaneda fellow. You know, the chess player. Oh, yes, I know. Poor Santos. He's so tragically intense. Macho but sensitive. But he's so busy playing that stupid old game with his buddy, it's, it's like I don't exist sometimes. Hey, I have a dream. Want to hear it? Someday, when I'm rich and famous, he'll look up from that chessboard for a second and suddenly realize what he missed out on. Ironic, huh? Well, I have manly things to do in a sensitive way. Bye. It's the door to the house of sticks. It's a barrel of sticks. Just another barrel of sticks. I don't think there are any sticks I want in that barrel. I don't think there are any sticks I want in... Slightly irregular and blemished sticks. 40% off marked price. Sticks look perfectly fine to me. To the untrained eye, they might. Those sticks didn't pass our rigid quality assurance process. Freddy, where's my new walking stick? It's right over here, Mr. Mandrill. A brand new cane, hand carved to the exact specifications of your previous stick. It better be, or I'll buy up your putrid little shop and replace it with something useful, like a public urinal. I uh, take it that you'll be putting this on your tab, Mr. Mandel? What do you think? You know, if I weren't a peaceable sort, I'd whack that gentleman over the head with one of my sticks. I wouldn't stop whacking until his brains leaked out all over my rustic, hand-polished hardwood floor. <laughs> yep. But you're a peaceable sort, right? Yep.
Must be the guy who makes these sticks. Yep, Freddy's my name. Been making sticks since you were no bigger than a toenail on a June bug. <laughs> I'm back. So you are. I wouldn't think that a walking stick shop could support itself on a pirate-infested island. Well, under normal circumstances, I might agree with that sentiment. But lately, Luker Island's been experiencing an influx of tourists, gawkers, and other assorted outsiders. They're always more than eager to purchase my authentic pirate walking sticks at a reasonable markup, of course. Besides which, I can always depend on Mr. Mandrel to break a few dozen sticks a week. He's been single-handedly keeping me in business for months. So the walking stick market is booming, is that it? Well, no, I wouldn't exactly call it booming. But just putting food on the table. And if Mr. Mandrel ever pays off his tab, I can retire. Uh, can you help me? I can't decide which walking stick is right for me. Well, now, in order to choose the right stick, we'll need to know a little about your walking stick needs. Where do you expect to be doing most of your walking? Along sun-swept Caribbean beaches. Hmm, a beachcomber. And how many people would you expect to be walking with? I'll be walking with my wife. She's a governor, you know. Whatever you say, sir. How long will you be walking on average? About a half hour. 45 minutes tops. Hmm, I see. Well then, taking all your answers into consideration, not to mention the numerous personal observations I've made of your movements, I believe that the perfect walking stick for you would be... The Veeblefester 9000 Rainforest Deluxe. As luck would have it, we've got dozens of them in stock. I'd like to take another whack at choosing the perfect walking stick. Well, then let's find a good one for you. Where do you expect to be doing most of your walking? Walking? I thought these things were just decorative. Perhaps you should talk to me again when you're more serious about walking sticks. Back and forth on the deck of my mighty pirate ship. Oh, I see. And how many people would you expect to be walking with? I'll probably be by myself. I sort of figured that might be the case. How long will you be walking on average? Eight hours, 23 minutes, 37 seconds. Very good. Well then, taking all your answers into consideration, not to mention the numerous personal observations I've made of your movements, I believe that the perfect walking stick for you would be the Veeblefester 9000 Rainforest Deluxe. Hey, isn't that what you told me the last time? See, it must be the stick for you. It's Freddy's stick catalog. Why would I want to look through the catalog when I've got the real thing right here? What does it take to get some service in here? No need to make a racket ringing that bell. I'm right here. You wouldn't happen to know anything about a no-nosed pirate, would you? Well, now, that sounds a lot like Peg Nose Pete. What would you like to know about him? Who is he? Peg Nose? He's the greatest pirate thief on Lucre Island. No one's come within a ship's broadside of putting him in leg irons yet, but I came close once. No. Yes, it happened one dark, foggy night. Many years ago, I was out testing out one of my new walking stick models, the WD-32. It has a real fancy-looking wood duck engraved in the handle, and he tried to mug me. Gosh, what did you do? Well, I wasn't going to stand for that. I raised my cane up to give him a good whack on the noggin, you betcha. And? And he ran away. I didn't even get a chance to swing. I guess he knows better than to mess with old Freddy. Yep. Fascinating. Where can I find him? You can't. Come again? No one knows where Peg Nose's hideout is. Oh, sure. There's some rumors of him living in the middle of the treacherous Mist-so-time marsh. But frankly, I, I don't believe a human being can get there from here. What happened to his nose? That's something of a mystery. Most folks around these parts would tell you it was nibbled off by a duck. Yeah. Personally, I don't believe it. Why not? Well, sir, it's been my experience that ducks have exceptionally tiny teeth. It'd take a long time for a duck, even a particularly nasty duck, to nibble off a man's nose. I can't imagine a man letting a duck peck away at his nose for hours on end without seeking medical help. Good point. So you really don't think that a duck bit off his nose? Yeah, I suppose it could have happened that way. I just find it highly irregular. On second thought, I think I'll find out about Pegnose on my own. Makes no never mind to me, Junior. Stick around. I'll be back later. Be seeing ya. If I had a hamster, I could use this stuff for bedding.
It is very important to choose a walking stick that fits your body, lifestyle, and temperament. Your walking stick should be no more than waist high and hefty enough to support 50% of your body weight. Active people should choose a stick that corresponds with the type of activity. Boring. I guess I don't want a walking stick that bad. Whoever lives here must be pretty small. I can't fit through that little door. I thought that laundry got hung up after it was cleaned. And that laundry's not my size. It's a full bottle of perfume. Hey, stop that! What do you think of this? That's our featured fragrance, Eau de la Chuck. It smells awful. We prefer to refer to it as earthy. It's a pile of empty perfume spritzer bottles. Whew, this stand is excessively odoriferous. Be glad this game doesn't have support for smell generation. I'll just take one. Nothing smells better than flowers. The contents of this bottle are too dry to... Hey! Stop that! What's with all the spritzing, mate? Ahem. <clears throat> Welcome to Sense and Sensibilities, where subtle fragrances from exotic lands transport you to worlds of romance and delight. My name is Hugo. And I am a licensed aromatherapist. Can Hugo interest you in one of our fine perfumes, colognies, or aftershaves? Aren't you a little piratey for a perfume salesman? Hugo's not a pirate. Hugo's a model citizen, making a positive economic contribution to the economic well-being of Luca Island. Uh-huh. You sure look like a pirate to me. But Hugo's not a pirate. Not anymore, leastways. How do you stop being a pirate? By taking Aussie Mandrill's Pirate Re-Education Mail Order Correspondence Course. What's that? It's a miracle, it is. In three weeks, it taught Hugo how to channel his destructive antisocial urges into more constructive avenues. Like selling scented bathwater. Precisely. Why would you want to quit being a pirate in the first place? Because Hugo could read the writing on the wall. Hugo saw that the pirate lifestyle was being marginalized by powerful outside interests. Hugo decided to get out while the getting was good. Um, yeah. Doesn't Hugo miss being a pirate? Not especially, no. Although sometimes Hugo misses the wind in his face. And the wenches. And Hugo misses the grog. And the decks covered with the blood of Hugo's enemies. But other than that, no, not a thing. Yeep. What's that ungodly stench you've been exposing to unsuspecting passers-by? That's our featured fragrance, Eau de la Chuck. Who'd want to smell like LeChuck? Oh, it's very popular among tourists wanting to capture that authentic swashbuckling mystique. But LeChuck smelled like a rotting corpse. We prefer to refer to it as earthy. Oh, do LeChuck's really that popular? Oh, yes, sir. In the last few hours, Hugo's gone through dozens of sample bottles. You wouldn't happen to have seen a no-nosed pirate run by here with a sack of loot, would you? No, but Hugo did see you run by here with a sack of loot. When I ran by here with a sack of loot, which way was I going? Towards the deepest forests of Luca Island. Thanks. Smell you later. Thank you for your patronage. Please come again. Hey there, money bags. Very funny, Mr. Threepwood. Are you enjoying the money you stole? Hey, I'm innocent. Yes, right. And I'm a 20 karat brooch. It was the no-nosed man. Oh, I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. Of course, I used to. Until you came along, that is. Eh, enough about me. How's the banking business? Oh, just great, thanks to you. Now I'm broke. And nobody on this island will trust me with their money ever again. What am I going to do now? I'll find the guy who did it and wreak vengeance upon his soul. That won't help me much, but watching you fall on a sword would be entertaining. Well, you could have a bake sale. I've only met one person who could sell pastries to pirates. 
and he's in real estate. You could steal enough to start your bank again. I'm a banker. I don't know anything about stealing. Have you seen someone go by here carrying a bag of loot? What does he look like? Sort of like me. Yes, I've seen him. But he didn't have a bag with him. Really? Where? I'm looking at him! When are you going to reopen the bank? Inspector Canard won't let me inside. So even if I could afford to reopen it, I'm not allowed. Why aren't you allowed inside? The inspector says that it's a crime scene and needs to remain sealed until the case is closed. Let's break in. Unlike you, I respect authority and law. No one will enter the bank until the crime is solved. Then why are you hanging around here? You look kind of suspicious to me. I didn't rob the bank if that's what you're insinuating. I don't know. Most robberies are inside jobs. Maybe. But all criminals return to the scene of the crime. And here you are. I hear my parole officer calling. See you later. Do you mind if I turn this on? I said, do you mind if I turn this on? Hmm. Guess not. It's a basket of finely crafted prosthetic... Did I hear something? Nope. Just the haunting melodies of my music box. Hey, does the smell in this hanky remind you of anything or anybody? Oh, no. Let me see. No, I don't really smell much of anything in it. What do you mean? I thought blind people's... I, 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 visually challenged. Sorry, I thought visually challenged people's other senses become enhanced to offset the lack of vision. I mean, I have a fully functioning set of eyes and even I can smell the foul odor coming off this hanky. <laughs> well, that only applies when my nose is clear. I've kind of got a little bit of a cold and stuffed nose, so I can't smell much right now. If you really need to make use of my amazing odor-divining abilities, you're gonna have to find a way to give me an amplified version of this smell. Like how? Just follow your nose. Nothing smells better than cedar cologne. I don't think she'd like that. Does this remind you of anything? Hey, stop that! Not especially, no. Nah, I prefer to keep this to myself and a select group of close friends. Ah, there's nothing like the smell of buckets upon buckets of rotting fish in the morning sun. It's a rather unspectacular duck. Smells like dead fish in here. Nine kinds of dead fish, huh? It's a large, stinky vat of free bait, marinating in bait juice. Nothing like the smell of rotting bait to woo the ladies. Look at the cute little termite circus. It's just like a flea circus, but with termites. That was exciting. Contrary to popular legends, fish heads are neither roly nor poly. This must be where the magic happens. I told you to stay away from there. I only see five kinds of dead fish here. That's not our entire selection, you know. One-armed Sam's shark repellent. Ooh, it's the Grouper Master 3000 series with bamboo composite core. Caviar in a bait shop? Oh, that's just how I get rid of my expired bait. Even if I liked caviar, uh, I wouldn't take that stuff. Nah, I'd have no use for it. I can never seem to bring myself around to stabbing poor defenseless little worms with hooks. Uh, just looking at him makes my eyes burn. 
Excuse me. Yes? Do you have any bait that could catch a cold? No. Do you have any bait that could catch a tiger by the tail? No. Do you have any bait that could catch a thief? No. Do you have any bait that could catch a red grouper? For the last time. Oh, yes. That free stuff over there will work fine. Gotcha. How's the bait business? Uh, it stinks. You're telling me, P.U. No, I mean it's horrible. I bet business would pick up if you crack open a window every now and then. Why, I tried that. Well, did it help? No. In fact, it seemed to drive prospective customers away. And that's when I realized, see, that something strange is going on. Strange? How so? Well, it may be the chum talking, but I could swear that Luca Island is getting less and less pirate friendly. Eh? Really? How? Why, we've been besieged. By hostile invaders? Weiss! Tourists! Ah! Yikes. There aren't many of them around today, but you hang around for a week, and they'll pop up like a bloated corpse in a calm sea. Why, they, they've been driving some of Luca's oldest pirate-oriented businesses into new fields, and have compelled some of our nastier pirates to consider new lifestyle choices. Why, I myself have soiled my once noble bait shop with a cheesy Thaimite Tychus in a desperate attempt to get me hands on some of those tourist shekels. Well, is it working? Not very well. Insects seem to repel tourists almost as much as fish guts. Go figure. Is the bait business getting any better? Nope. It still stinks. Do you know anything about a no-nosed pirate thief? That sounds like Peg Nose Pete. You know him? Are you kidding? Everyone on Luker Island is heard of Peg Nose Pete. Who is he? Boy, he's the most notorious thief on Luker Island. He's never been caught, and his loot has never been recovered. And his true face, aside from his trademark false nose, has never been seen. Well, I've seen his true face. It's not pretty. Yeah, right. And I've seen a bucket of chum solve complex math problems. <laughs> Where can I find it? Well, you can't. Nobody can. There's rumor that his hideout is somewhere in the heart of the mists of time marsh. Great. I'm off to the marsh. But no one has ever been able to navigate their way through the marsh without getting hopelessly lost. It's cursed. Darn. Another curse. How did he lose his nose? Oh. That's one of the darkest mysteries of Luca Island. Uh, some would have you believe that Peg Nose's proud proboscis was pecked off by a duck. <laughs> but I believe it was a school of deranged flounder that made off with his hunker. Mm -hmm. That's one of the darkest mysteries of Luca Island? No, no. But it sounds more ominous that way. How does he smell without a nose anyway? Uh, awful. Uh, I guess I should have seen that one coming. Uh, let's talk about something else. Well, whatever skins your salmon. I'm almost afraid to ask, but why are you running a termite circus? Well, I used to sell termites as bait, eh? But most deep sea fishermen prefer something with a bit more... Stench? Meat. Anyway, when bait sales started tailing off, I took all my termites and trained them to do psychic tricks. Huh? I even got the act approved by the newly formed Luca Arts Entertainment Consortium. Well, is it working? Ah, uh, not really. I have to kick most of my profits back to the head of the consortium. Hey, that runs. It sure stinks in here. Eh, you get used to it after a while and come to miss it when you're out and about. That's why I never bathe, see? So I can keep that sweet, sweet scent of fish entrails with me wherever I go. Ah. How touching. A dimension revolting. Why is that bait over there free? Well, that bait is nearly expired. I need to get rid of it before it goes bad. How does bait go bad? Oh, the usual ways. Falls in with the wrong crowd, starts rebelling against authority, begins dating bait of loose virtue. And before you know it, the bait's gone bad. I think I'll just look around for a while. Now well, you look all you like, but if you break it, you'll board it. Hmm, this requires stealth. Come and get it, boys. Ah, look at those little buggers go. They must be real hungry for the taste of redwood. It's a wooden hand infested with termites.
it'd probably be a bad idea to wave his stolen stars in front of his face. Hey, you haven't seen my timeites, have you? They seem to have disappeared. Perhaps they ran off to join another circus. You know, I had figured you as a suspect, but now I know you don't have the wits to have done it. <laughs> Sharp? I wonder what kind of bait was used to catch this guy. Are you kidding? That was the bait! I dropped the sword into the sewers. Oh well. Now it's a broken and very stinky sword. Wow. What a very deep, dark hole. Not to mention smelly. Phew. On second thought, I don't think I want to go down there for any reason. There's something scratched into the bottom of this. It says, Wendy loves Ned. But scratched out right next to that, it says, Larry loves Wendy. What a weird place to profess your love for someone. That's some weird smelling stuff you sprayed at me. It smells woody and fishy and flowery. I'd like to have another one of those free prostheses. Can't get enough of experimental technology, eh? Okay, once upon a time, there was a pirate named... Larry? Larry. Larry wanted to win the hand of a fair maiden named... Wendy? Wendy, tragically. Wendy had already pledged her heart to a jerk named... Ned? Ned, that's it. Well? Well, what? What happened? Realising that beauty was only skin deep, she married the ugliest man in town, the end. What a dreadful story. You really should leave the storytelling to the professionals. I know. Here's your free experimental prosthesis. What is it? This is something special. It's a sample of my newly created, ultra-stretchy, one-size-fits-all prosthetic skin. Yeah. With just a few square feet of this miracle substance, a pirate can replace all the skin he's lost during a lifetime of sword fighting, knife fighting, keel hauling, and the occasional flogging. And it comes complete with a set of tiny hooks for easy attachment. I repeat. Yeah. See you later. And that makes one of us. Hey, it's like a trampoline. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Whoa, whoa! It controls that light. Technology marches forward. Oh, how cute. Little tiny treasure chests that you can't actually fit anything into. What's that shadow? It looks like a nose? Hey, a prosthetic nose! Good, gross. I'll bet this belongs to that smelly pirate guy. The one with no nose. I'll take that, Mr. Threepwood. Ah! What are you doing in here? I might ask you the same question. Instead, I'll just take that as evidence. Let's go try it on Peg Nose. What a great idea. Except no one knows where he is. Bring him in, and I'll consider it. But remember this, even if it fits, it only proves he was in the bank. It doesn't tie him to the loot. You still think I did it, don't you? Yes, but I can be swayed by the right evidence. Now get out of here.
always wanted swamp scented perfume. Hey, this smells exactly like that hanky, only stronger. Whew! That's an all too familiar smell. I guess I can't complain though, since Kent Z. Yosarian is my best customer. Kent Z. Yosarian. The man regularly buys prosthetic noses from me. Really? He's my, uh, really good friend. Yeah. I lost track of him and, uh, missed him so much that I made a little odor potion to remind me of him. Okay, too much information. I have a strict rule of don't ask, don't smell. Well, anyways, if you know where I can find my, uh, friend, that'd be very helpful. Oh, yeah, sure. He lives out past the mists of time marsh. You can't get through there, though, without the directions he gave me. And it's filed away someplace in my filomatic system. Well, let's go get that file. I can't. Pongo, my filing monkey, ran away a while back. He was the only one who knew how to run the filomatic. As a result, I have no idea how to retrieve the map. But if you can figure it out, feel free. The controls are right here. Ooh, ooh, stop spraying me with that. Sorry, but I want to be sure of this. Who did you say this smell belonged to? Like I told you, it belongs to Kent Z. Yosarian. Thanks. The name on it says, Arthur F. Jomama. It has all sorts of useless information, such as prosthetic prescriptions, address, phone number, allergies. There are directions to Pegno's Pete's house. Weird. Looks more like a train schedule to me. Weird. Looks more like a train schedule to me. No. Weird. Looks more like a train schedule to me. Hey Guybrush, I need your help. Here, take this. Where did you get this? Cripes, do I always sound this annoying? Will you open the gate for yourself already? Oh, you'll need this too. Hey, great, a gun! Watch out, peg nose. And this. Um, great, a rubber chicken with a pulley in the middle. If you're really me, then what number am I thinking of right now? One, one, three, eight. Creepy. That is the number I'm thinking of. I guess you really are me. I'd better not. I think all this talking to myself is wreaking havoc with the space-time continuum. I bet I could open any lock with this key. I've never had a gun in any of my previous adventures. This should be fun. I haven't seen one of these in a long time. It seems heavier than I remember it, though. Ow! Gee, they're right. Gun owners are five times more likely to shoot themselves. I'd prefer to keep this gate between myself and the corpse. Hey, Guybrush, I need your help. <laughs> no. 
No, don't say anything. You'll cause a paradox. Thanks. Um, me? I'll try to be careful. Here, take this. Where did you get this? Cripes, do I always sound this annoying? Will you open the gate for yourself already? Oh, you'll need this too. Hey, great, a gun. Watch out, peg nose. And this. Um, great, a rubber chicken with a pulley in the middle. Ow! Gee, they're right. Gun owners are five times more likely to shoot themselves. Uh-oh. Brush. I need your help. Here, take this. Who are you? I'm you in the future. I need you to open the gate for me. Oh, you'll need this too. Hey, hey great, a gun! Watch out, peg nose. And this. Um, great, a rubber chicken with a pulley in the middle. If you're really me, then what number am I thinking of right now? 28 and a half. Creepy. That is the number I'm thinking of. I guess you really are me. Guybrush, you're the greatest. Oh, I've got one more thing for you. Ooh, a rope. That'll be useful. Brush. I need your help. Here, take this. Who are you? I'm you in the future. I need you to open the gate for me. Are you sure that you want to give me that right now? And this. Um... Great, a rubber chicken with a pulley in the middle. If you're really me, then what number am I thinking of right now? 28 and a half. Creepy. That is the number I'm thinking of. I guess you really are me. Thanks, Guybrush. You're the greatest. Oh, I've got one more thing for you. Ooh, a rope. That'll be useful. I bet a whole lot of crawdaddies would fit in this trap, and I bet it doesn't catch many either, with gaps that big between the bars. This is somebody else's raft. This is somebody else's raft. Nah, I like my raft better. I can hear some people talking inside. If I move closer to the window, maybe I'll be able to make out what they're saying. Not I say, I got the job done. Now where's my money? Hmm, this should be all in due time, my dear Mr. Pignose. Hey, that voice sounds familiar. We've only completed part of the plan. You've done an admirable job in getting Guybrush out of the way, as well as reappropriating the Marley family heirlooms. I trust you put them somewhere safe for the time being? Of course I am. I'm no idiot. That junk you're so interested in is safe and sound in my impenetrable cave. 
That junk, as you call it, may very well be the key to ridding these islands of pirates once and for all. Uh, uh, no offence, of course. Right. So about five feet. Later, my good man. In the meantime, the heirlooms are our little secret. Keep them hidden, and not a word to anyone. We'd hate to have my plan spoiled by an indiscretion. All right, Mr. Batgirl, we'll do it your way. But if you don't pay me soon, I'll cut your gizzard out. There's no need to be such a ruffian. You'll get what's coming to you. I'd better. I'm off to tend to my affairs. Now that we're in possession of the Marley heirlooms, I must begin determining how they relate to the ultimate insult. So, Ozzy and Pegnose are working together. After I deal with Pegnose here, I'll have to pay Mr. Mandrill a little visit. I'm not gonna get too close. Wouldn't want Pegnose to see me. Pegnose must catch his own fish. No thanks. If I need stinky old fish, I'll go to the bait shop. No thanks. I prefer to drink rum that's been prepared by people with fully functioning nasal equipment. Pegnose must brew his own rum. Honey? I don't feel welcome. Honey, I don't... If I just go barging in there, Pignos will shoot me. No, ah. oh, no! Go away, you stupid duck! <laughs> no! 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 I don't think so. You're going to jail, bucko. Well, Inspector, here's your real criminal. What's this? That looks like Peg Nose Beat. Let me out of here. It is. He's the one who framed me for the bank robbery. I'd like this anklet removed now. You've got nothing on me. I overheard you and Ozzy talking about how he hired you to rob the bank and frame me. Ah, that won't hold up his evidence. He's right. Do you have some proof he did it? But that prosthetic nose I gave you earlier should clear my name. Well, not exactly. That would only prove that Peg Nose here was at the scene of the crime. It wouldn't prove he was the perpetrator. To do that, you'd need to prove Peg Nose had the loot in his possession. But... So, I will not be administering justice in this case. But you can't just let him go. Oh, Pete's not going anywhere. He's wanted for plenty of other crimes. Come back when you think you can prove what you claim. <sighs> All right. Gee, I wonder how Elaine's doing. And so, my swashbuckling citizens, as we approach the next century, can we really afford to entrust Melee Island's future to a man with no past, a man with no experience, a man who doesn't even seem to like pirates? Common sense says no! My opponent is right. I am a newcomer to these islands, and it's true that my experience in affairs of state is minimal at best. But it doesn't take a seventh-generation pirate princess to see that Melee Island needs more than a part-time status quo governor. A governor who can't even promise her citizens good times and free grog. Stop, stop it! You, you, you can't be stupid enough to believe that Charles is just gonna give you free grog and good times, can you? Well, if it isn't Peg Nose Pete, the pilfering pirate. What do you want, you ponytail freak? So, the infamous Peg Nose Pete finally meets his match. You're nothing without your precious attack done. I want my belongings and I want them now. I oh, don't know what you're talking about. Tell me where my stuff is and I won't hurt you. Ooh, now there's a threat. This is your last chance to tell me where the loot is. Oh, what? Or I'll boil you in oil. Oh, that works. Or you'll be wishing it was just your nose that was missing. Big talk for such a little man. Or I'll ask you again. That doesn't surprise me. Or I'll start singing show tunes. Yeah, then I'll sing show tunes through my nose cavity. Uh, or I'll bring my duck in here. Ha <laughs> ha, there's no pets allowed in this building. Or nothing. That's what I figured. <laughs>
Come on. Please tell me where the loot is. I'll have a talk. How does Ozzy Mandrill fit into this scheme? I don't know who or what you're talking about. Yes, you do. I saw him over at your house. And you still can't figure it out. You're a sorry excuse for a pirate. I am not. I'm mightier than you'll ever be. <laughs> right. I'll let you get back to running errands for the wifey. Did a duck really nibble off your nose? I'm not talking to you. Quack. <laughs> Quack! Ah! Stay here. I'm off to enjoy my freedom. Freedom? You can't even leave the island. Eh, better not. Inspector? Yes? Ozzy Mandrill hired Pegnose Pete to set me up. Have you got any proof? I overheard them talking about it. Listen, you. I've been tolerating your quixotic attempt to prove your innocence, but if you start slandering the good names of respectable and powerful citizens like Mr. Mandrill, I'm going to have to seriously think about throwing you back in the clink. Do I make myself clear? Crystal. I caught the real thief. Can I go now? I'm innocent! Quiet, you! Well, we're all tickled pink that you've managed to capture Pegnose, seeing as how he's wanted for questioning in hundreds of Luca Island thefts. But you haven't recovered the stolen loot yet. Well, I better get out there and prove my innocence. Stay out of trouble. I'm back. What do you want now? Hey, you're the jerk who hired Pegnos to frame me for the bank robbery. That's strange. I heard that you were the one who robbed the bank. Ha! I overheard you talking to Pegnos in the swamp. What? You heard me. I know all about your scheme to steal the Marley heirlooms. Ah! Your puny pirate brain is incapable of perceiving the true depths of my scheme. Besides, you'll never be able to pin anything on me without the loot. And you'll never find it. Ha! I already found it. Really? You found Pegnose's booty showcase? Um, yeah. What did it look like? As showrooms go, I'd rate it a 78. It had a good beat and I could dance to it. Hmm. You're probably bluffing. But I was planning to take a hike to the showroom anyway. And when I return, I'll have plumbed the mysteries of the ultimate insult. Don't touch anything while I'm gone. Grandpa Marley's letter mentioned the ultimate insult. Wonder if it's important. It's not as much fun when Ozzy isn't here to enjoy the prank, too. path ends here. There's no way I'll be able to follow him through the forest without some sort of trail. What are you doing? And what is that horrid smell? You befouled my platypus. Crikey, look what you made me do. Now I need to order a new cane. I thought he'd never leave. Still here, are ya? Those little buggers sure know high quality wood when they see it. Pretty. My new kind of better be ready. Oh, sure is, Mr. Mandrel. It's right uh, over on that bench there. Creepwood? Thinking of buying a walking stick of your own, are you? Uh, it might make you look more distinguished. <laughs> Quite like a monkey in a hat. <laughs> yeah, those are funny. Hey. Put it on my bill, Freddy, and don't even think about overcharging me, or I'll own ya. Yes, sir. Always a pleasure, Mr. Mandrill. It's a pile of sawdust. Hey, I can hear the termites. Must be dinner time. Stop that! 
I'm back. What do you want now? You're through, Mandrill. I can prove that you framed me. Let me guess. You found Pegnose's booty showcase. Yeah. And what did it look like? It's very nice. Lots of booty. With the power of the ultimate insult, the Caribbean will be mine. Don't touch anything while I'm gone. Hmm. Once I clear my name, I really should find out what this ultimate insult thingy is. It's a pile of sawdust. Good thing I had that trail to follow. Up until now, that is. It's disappeared. Those termites probably ran out of cane to eat. Now, where did that Australian pirate phobe go? Oh, there he is. I must have kangaroos in me upper paddock. Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting Aussies. This ultimate insult nonsense has me uncharacteristically baffled. I knew I should have taken that class in ancient voodoo curses at the University of Toowoomba. The heirlooms must be nearby. They're very tropical. It's really deep here. I can't see the bottom at all. Just a strange, murky darkness. Hey, there's a hidden passage back here. That must be where Ozzy disappeared to. I wonder if Elena will let me have one of these. Ick, dirty dishes. For a master thief, Pegnos is a real slob. This button practically screams push me. What kind of twisted freak keeps the skulls of his victims lying in piles around his showroom? I bet he wasn't hugged much as a child. I wonder what's behind this drape-like thing that's occluding my view. What an odd collection of junk. There doesn't actually seem to be all that much valuable stuff in here. Murray? Guess not. Hey, that looks like the Lucre Town Bank's missing loot. And the Marley Heirlooms. I've got to find a way to get in there. The bank booty and the Marley Heirlooms are in the cavern on the other side of this unbreakable window. Yeah, sure. I'll just break that reinforced glass by banging my head on it. That'll certainly mess up the carpet. Too dark to see. Wish those fish would come over here so I could see something. There, now my bait will stay fresh. Here, fishy, fishy, fishy. There's a little glowing fish sealed inside. I already have something in there. I think that's called moose coral. It's just some slimy seaweed. It's a good thing I can hold my breath for 10 minutes. It's the stolen booty from the bank. It's beautiful. I don't think it's my time to walk into the light. just fell out of the chest. A tiny screw. I'll bet it goes to Pegnose's prosthetic nose. Now I can clear the good name of Guybrush Streetwood. Hmm, I wonder what this little brass screw could be used for. What a strange 
essentially shapes the lag type. That's Pegnos' showroom over there. No, my little fish might escape if I open it. I already have something in there. Looks like someone couldn't hold their breath long enough. I believe this species is known as a kind of Steridihenresia. It's a cavern leading into the rocks. Yeah, I wonder what that is. I'm almost out of air. I better get to the surface. I don't think he'd like that. I don't think he'd like that. I don't think he'd like that. Nah. Well, if it isn't Pegnose... Oh, leave me alone! Being incarcerated is bad enough without the torture of your dribble. I bet you didn't realize that you smell like a combination of swamp water, sawdust, fish bait, and flowers. Are you getting more dates now that you've discovered a better scent? Why would someone with no nose need a hanky? Well, I still have drainage, you know. You know, we actually do look kind of similar. Hi, that's cruel and unusual punishment. Quack! <laughs> I don't think he'd like that. I'm afraid to rummage through this, lest I get my fingerprints all over everything. I recovered the stolen loot! Am I free now? That doesn't mean you didn't steal it. I recovered the stolen loot! Am I free now? That doesn't mean you didn't steal it. Oh, Inspector, I think you'll find this interesting. What's this? It looks like a tiny screw. I think you'll find it goes with a nose I gave you earlier. Oh, you do, do you? What makes you so sure, eh? It won't prove a thing. Quiet, you. Well then, perhaps we should give it a try. Down! Down, down! Down! Hold still, you! Quiet, you! Well, I'll be. Well, let, let's see that screw. It doesn't fit! Quiet, you! If the nose fits, you must acquit. I've never seen that screw before in my life. Quiet, you! Well, all right then. I guess your name's been cleared. Let's see that leg of yours. Oh, um, right. <laughs> the anklet thingy. Hold on. Maybe I should do a background check on you. Just because you didn't rob the bank, doesn't mean you aren't wanted for other more heinous crimes. Hi, he stole a duck! Quiet, Quiet you. you! On the other hand, without the stigma of felonious robbery hanging over your head, you seem pretty harmless. So, off you go. Hey, was that an insult? <laughs> Done paying your debt to society, Otis? Ha freaking ha. Time to make sale, shipmates. Thank gods, I hate this repressive place. Yeah, I was getting kind of bored. We can't. I have more repairs to make. <laughs> Just kidding. Ship's ready. All right, mateys. Stay here and watch the ship while I go into town. Yeah, you guys stay here while uh, Guybrush and I check out the flora. If you get to go, I get to go. Scumbar, here I come! Hey, if anyone here gets to go to the scumbar, it's me. Hey, <clears throat> please stay here and guard the ship. I'll be back soon. Jeez, we were just kidding. We were. The 
This can't be right. I'm afraid it is, Governor. Charles L. Charles' Good Times Free Grog campaign has given him a 23% lead in all the polls. But... Honey, I'm home! Guybrush! Ah, uh, you're back! Yes, and look what I've got. Uh, oh, wait, that's not it. Oh, Guybrush, this is wonderful! Esteban, take these papers down to Melee Town Hall and save my mansion. Oh, Guybrush, I am so glad you're back. What took you so long? Well, that's a funny story. It all started when I went looking for the no-nosed pirate. And then Ozzy said, I'm gonna put your shrimp on me body. After that, I was attacked by an army of koalas. And so the lawyers used the Marley Mansion deed to drop the legal papers to save the mansion. And I came back here. Well, seems like the sensible thing to do would be to destroy my grandfather's heirloom so that no one could get their hands on the ultimate insult. Whatever that is. I agree. Got a match? <laughs> Charles, you manipulating weasel. Get out of my house before I stick my piranha poodles on you. Yikes! No, no, my dear Mrs. Marley. Threepwood. Is that any way to talk to the next governor of Melee Island? I don't care what the polls say. The pirates of Melee will see through your tissues of false hopes and empty promises. <laughs> the pirates of Melee couldn't see through a window. They can't even see what's right in front of them. What are you talking about? Why, only the biggest lie of... them. LeChuck! LeChuck! At your service! Enough of this inane banter! I've got an election to win! <laughs> How do you expect to be elected once I tell everyone you're really LeChuck? Go ahead, tell them! Shout it from the rooftops! It will only ensure my victory! And once I'm elected, I'll use my gubernatorial powers to divine the secrets of... The ultimate insult, huh? You heard me. The ultimate insult. With its unholy power, I'll make the seas run red with the blood of my enemies. I'll bring the forces of hell to the shores of the Caribbean. And I'll finally make Elaine my willing bride. <laughs> Oh yeah? Well, you fight like a cow.